How's it going, everybody? So this is the very first meeting me, Ashley, and our family ever went to to talk to Chief McNeil, um, Truro Police, Rob Hearn, Deputy Chief, Tom Fitzpatrick, um, Colchester Search and Rescue. And if you look closely, you can catch some of Chief McNeil's lies in the meetings. I just wanted to share this. I've shared this before, but I don't think I shared the whole thing. Just wanted to give you guys an idea on the things they did and a whole lot of things they didn't do. Let's bring Dylan home. This is a one hour, three minute recording of our first meeting. that was had the 
decision was to kind of just switch gears. So for the next three days when we were there, so I just want to. It was a Thursday night that we moved to a change phase from research to Thursday night then. recovery. On Friday morning, uh, we had a DNR helicopter. That's what I'm bringing up. We beat a story up there right now. So, what we did. when Friday morning we went up in the helicopter, we covered every nook, every cranny, and everything we could get. They're from right over the house. If you're wondering, that's our command post. That's your the residency on KP, the last known position is what we call. So, in the helicopter, Rob was there, Tom and myself were both up in the helicopter as well with the pilot. We covered every nook and cranny all the way to the great village that we could with the helicopter that day as well. And then by 5 p.m. that night, we actually had search teams back on site, which is when we started doing our extensive riverbank search. So we had search teams for the next three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we covered every riverbank from the other side of the railroad bridge all the way down to 102, and then Sunday we actually covered, by the way, it's not even on the map. Sorry, did we miss Thursday? No, Thursday, Thursday was the drone. Thursday to Friday. Thursday was the drone. Friday. The drones, they, they researched a lot of this area. They did the drones, they had their search teams in ground on foot. They had the dive team there. So they had a lot of the special resources yeah. there on Thursday. I'll, I'll just comment it. All three days at home time was here. Yes. So Wednesday afternoon, uh, our response was we were we arrived with the of call initially. Um, we reached out to our police partners over across the river at RCP, they deployed resources and uh, our canine team searched the area. We had a true fire out of the uh, the river, watching the river, how the fire and relieve them. And I, they stayed there till till dark. Uh, watching the river. Uh, we rolled in around four, yeah, four o'clock that day. That was outside of four to four. Uh, a not a trusted message went out through social media advising the Los Gatos in the area. And as once that went out, you could see a lot of town residents. Everybody was in that area to look at, look at the shot. So, so. Yeah, all three days of the helicopter. Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, and about five hours of flight time. Friday. Friday. And that was what that. Well, it was. That was the track from Friday. It was down Maitland Way. That was Friday. Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The pilot was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. The, the pilot was fantastic. In some cases, we were not well enough. We could have sent right out of the helicopter uh, right. up to the area. Yeah. And if, if there had been a need to, yeah. it would have. Yes. He would have landed so we could get a look if we had had the cause to actually go and investigate something further. Yeah, we actually responded to a few radio calls. There's things spotted too as well with the helicopter, yeah. check them all out, and that yeah. stuff. We searched high and low. So, and again, we did the river base. We also had observation points set up every day when the tide came in to watch the waters and that, make sure there was nothing in the water. Um, and then yesterday, we, we probably heard we were, we were back at Leopard Rock looking in the water hole again. And then we actually had, because one of the areas we weren't completely satisfied with was the area behind Stanfields because it's fenced. So the teams, and it's very steep, the teams were having troubles getting in there. We actually had Turo Fire wash that entire thing in the water yesterday with pipe holes checking. So that entire area was completely covered off again yesterday. Any questions, sir? Yeah, many questions I'm probably never have answers for. And we feel the same way. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you do. So, just to give you an overall idea, we had a total of 119 castings out. And this is going to look like a whole bunch of squiggly lines when it loads slowly. So that is the tracks from the search teams that were out looking. So each team has a GPS and it's all recorded where they look. That's, yeah. what, that's what that is. So even if we just go over here and come in. May I ask why why wouldn't you guys start at the point he was missing at the river? And then why wasn't it moved out close to the bay and worked their way in right away? 
change that went, went to Boomer 102 to start working their way back. So the, the, it's it's the method, like the, the percentage. So just from this, the distance traveled, 75% of all the children lost in this category are found within 800 meters of that, of the last known position. So that's why we focus so closely in, because that's the highest probability area. So that's the best chance we have. But as soon as we cover that area, we were good all the way to the 102 working our way in, and the helicopter had already been flying that, even from day one. Excuse me, in that equation that you just mentioned, about 75%, yeah. sir, does that include if indeed he went in the water and the, the, the speed of the... That, that's the overall. The uh, fine location breaks it down to whether they're found in structures or on roads or in waterways. So when I look for an urban area, 3% are found in water. My, my big concern was the fat 56, because children that range are known for hiding. That was my first biggest concern, was to get those structures done first. And then the next thing we went to was the waterways. Danger readers, Jack, danger readers, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry, the waterways. Uh, danger readers, we call them, like, hot red areas that we, we classify yeah. them as, where there's a danger to, okay. to the child, and that's not our checks priority. Within the first hour of us on site, there was a fire department sitting down where the old house or hotel the woke off was, watching the water. Yeah, and before, they were there. Before they were on site, I was in the helicopter, mm -hmm. right? Flying, flying that river. Before these, these guys got here. So once we reached out to Shuby, the helicopter's here fairly quick and we jumped in and, and took over. So I mean, there's absolutely no sign of him being in the water. Other than, other than, other than that somebody could have thrown in boots. Absolutely. Which is up to So why wasn't an Amber Alert? We're like, they should make a new law, like Dylan's law, where anyone under 10, that Amber Alert really should go out just, just in case. Because... <laughs> It's a possibility. I mean, it's a rare occasion, but this is a rare occasion. Okay, so, so I'll talk about the angle right quick. So uh, I can call the province right away about 2 o'clock or so on Wednesday. I uh, told them what we had on the go. And they then advised that right off the jump, we didn't have any real evidence to suggest abduction or foul play right off the jump. So that isn't going to trigger the Amber Alert. But what they said they would do is put her on a true similar. So when out, instead of going to everybody, cell phones, it goes out to all the media platforms, and then all the government social media. That's about the best they can do on the air right? Uh, now, if we had somebody say, yeah, there was a suspicious vehicle there just minutes before he was gone, then it would have been an air scenario, but unfortunately we didn't have that, right? There was a suspicious guy with a duffel bag. Yeah, we didn't check that out. So we didn't lose his laundry, right? So, but there was nothing there to trigger the Amber Alert at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, but what you didn't see us do is we, we focus on the search, because that's the most obvious. Yes. But right from the jump, we've been doing, I'm not going to say a criminal investigation, but a missing persons investigation. So the, the, the detective section, they're not there searching physically. They were there originally to help the right away to move the area, but they've been doing some background stuff, right? And that's the stuff the public does. So we're not going to our eggs. something that we that's not, we don't put all our eggs in one basket, so they've been looking at video, going and collecting video at different businesses, canvas and areas, doing all that stuff, and that still hasn't really yielded anything to suspect foul play at this point in time, right? Uh, we've brought in family members, we've, we've interviewed folks, got some, get some you know, information from you guys. That work needs to continue now because we're transitioning from a search and recovery to now a missing persons, active missing persons file, right? So those are the things that we've been doing behind the scenes that will continue to, to go now because these guys have put in the time and the effort. You've seen how extensive the search has been. Oh, yeah. There's not a whole lot left on that front for us to do. They do have a couple of things they want to try this week and they'll get to that in a minute to let you know what that is. But our efforts now are going to focus solely on the missing person spot. We've been focusing on both. The majority has been on the search because we want to find them. Oh, yeah. This is now where the reality where we're at. We, I don't know what else physically these folks can do on the search front. So now we've got to ramp up our missing persons file a little bit more, right? So not to say we haven't been doing both because we have, but uh, we've exhausted this side, unfortunately, right? right at this point in time. So now we need to continue on with the missing persons piece and a couple other little tricks that they have that they want to try. Okay. So I don't know if that, if that addresses that piece, but that's, yeah. that's where we're at, right? So we have been doing those things just behind the scenes, right? 
Okay, so let's introduce what we're, we're looking at. We've, we've done this, we've searched. Uh, our teams are very involved in this right now, so we're trying to think outside the box. And like you guys, we have a question. Well, if he was, was in the water, where'd he go? So we've got a little trick we're going to try. Um, never been done before, but we're going to try it. We have, we're, we're getting a panic made to simulate his eyes. And that stuff, we're, we're going to dress it as close to the clothing as we can get. We're going to release it in the creek. We're, gonna, we're putting a, an RF radio frequency tracker on it. We're going to station antennas all the way along the river as far as we can. Then we're going to track it and see if that's going to answer some questions for us. Okay. So they're going to wait until the tide conditions are similar to the we're last and, and they're going to try to simulate the environmental conditions the best they can without being exact, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why they're not jumping out doing it today, because that tidal condition is not quite what they need it to be. So we're hoping, maybe, maybe exactly, and we're hoping we're going to get it tomorrow, and we're hoping that to do it three times. That way we can use all the variables into it. So hopefully that's going to answer some questions for you folks as well as for us. And that's done as well. Okay. It's inside the box. So everybody thinks, you know. So we've reached out to uh, every modeling for, for charge. So if you had size, weight, all that kind of thing. The big factor here is the tug war. Right? That's, that's the, the dynamic that other places don't have. So their modeling, their calculations couldn't really pinpoint a, a potential area to look out in the bay. They, they kind of told us the, the modeling they do is more for open ocean, like for open water. But that tidal war, like Rob said, is such, a, is such an anomaly. You don't have it anywhere else really in the world. So it makes it a little bit more difficult for the modeling to be accurate, but we're still, we're still doing that. Right? So we, we flew that Friday. Um, it was like the, the water was just gone. At four o'clock, it's pretty believable to like, you know, that's that's the change in the in the, in the water. That's there. And unfortunately, the night he went missing was a full moon. Mm -hmm. So the tidal exactly. tidal war was at its max. You could hear it roaring down the river right out there at eleven o'clock at night, and it was only two and a half foot high wall of water that came down that down that river. The, the other avenue we're looking at is we're looking at maybe getting a camera in a few of the deep spots. We're trying to get with the current and everything. We're trying to see it. We can see it. Do you think it's a possibility still hung up under the water? You've had divers and cameras. We, we There's spots to the dive in. And the water wasn't that high at that moment in time, so it's, it's just the water crazy. Is actually quite high. The tidal war wasn't. The tidal war, well, the tidal war came in. I can't remember the exact time. But Tom was there the first night down by the river that left the brook. And the water was considerably higher even than it was two days later. When, when was the day that Tom and I were both in the yeah, internal fire guys were in the water, most of my height, they were up to their chest in that brook, right? In, in certain spots in that brook, right? Because there are the brook kind of runs and it gets it has some low spots. And I'm telling you, like, those guys were up to their like it was all they could do to stay up and it was running that high and they were up to their chest, right? In terms of now it's not like that today because the water flow to that creeks and they off. So the town has up the water the water treatment facility up at the top of Young Street. Uh, this ladder brook runs all the way up through Victoria Park and all the way through, right? Um, so yesterday afternoon when the engineer put a, a stopper in the brook way up by the water treatment plant, he kind of opened the stopper so it kind of slows the water flow down to the brook. So that was for yesterday. We put that in place so uh, so we could use the underwater camera and really took the water down. It was probably ankle height. So uh, anyway, we got we able to get that underwater camera in some spots that were unaccessible because of the height of the water. So he's got that. We're going to keep that stopper in place overnight tonight. And then if they go to do their experiment uh, Wednesday afternoon, late in the afternoon, he's going to open that stopper up and it should force a whole bunch of water from that problem and try to raise the height again to simulate the conditions that were last Wednesday. So that, that's what we're that's what we're a whole lot of things going on that are outside of the scope of normal search stuff, right? So we're not leaving anything apparent now, man. We're it's just all a matter of trying to get the timings right, get all the resources in the right spots at the right time to do that. Yeah. yeah. And our teams are there. If we find anything, we'll be back back later. They're sitting there with their phones in their hands. 
conscious. I mean, we're being like it's, it's, it's not so much that that, that speaks up the subject. The point is, is this, we're searching an area that we're capable of searching. We can't search the entire bay, unfortunately. It's just, for resources, that is just impossible. Like, unfortunately, it will move much as we want to. And some of those, some of those, is the problem where you found the first move. I mean, it, there's some, there's a lot of erosion in that brook because of water pressure and stuff over here. There's all these areas underneath the ground that, like, so this is the ground. Underneath is a hall for the water rush in there. And when we found that first move, there was a grocery cart, like a full-size grocery cart, in the water. That was, they had a pull out. Like, that's how big that cavern was, right? It was a grocery cart in there. They pulled it. And that's where the first move was located, right? So there's a few of those types of spots that we searched with an underwater camera, and the divers did the best they could searching it, right? They were in there looking around. But it's, it's still deep, and it's, it's hard to see. So even yesterday, when the water was low, we put that underwater camera back in there. So the flow of that brook coming down, you know, is it possible lodged in there somewhere? Who knows? But we want to make sure we for sure, right? Because that's where it's found, right? Uh, we haven't found any other article floating in that water other than it's right. So is it possible? We want to make sure we know for sure. We can rule out and say, hey, you know, he's not under there anywhere, right? That's that's kind of where we're at. So we we spent a lot of resources in that area because. Clothing, 
people searched them. The officers weren't stopping them. It almost seemed to be impossible. There were people, oh, when I was in that river, there were people coming from Bible Hillside, up over the riverbank, up over the train oh, tracks. They were under to hundreds of people. I, I, watched, I watched at least four people walking through I'm from the Santa River through the right arm fields. Right. Right. Guys right. right. on ATVs, so like we were telling them, you know, yeah. appreciate it, but yeah, right. Or yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. There were people, yeah. right? Like, yeah. we were trying to get them out of yeah. the way because for yeah. us, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, it's a good area. It would be impossible to make people broken branches, footprints. And muddy areas and all that stuff. And, and I'm as guilty as the rest of them because I went right to the river and I worked all the way down the Capitol Hill. Right? So, yeah, why did you go directly to the river? Because I just figured um, looking around there, if, if Dylan got away that fast, he'd be tripping and falling, going through the struggle, the only three. But if he's on the road, he, that's, if he got away that fast, right. that's which way he would go. Yeah. So, so we, myself and Tom walked in on Sunday and uh, Identical to your idea. Yeah, and I just figured, I, look, I got my phone's full of pictures all the way up that river. Um, you know, I just had to find some answers. Yeah. But like I say, I think he went up through the little spot there where Dorothy has some trees in her yard. Right? Yeah. That was the area. But our concern also is any time that Dylan has been over there, I've been over there plenty of times when Dylan's running and he does, like, he tries to run, he tries to take off, he's, he's go, 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 little Houdini, and nine times out of ten, he cuts across the side yard towards the road, almost every single time. Okay. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, like he said, has gone in the other direction, but he's never been taken down to the brook or to the river. Well, you know, just nine times out of ten. Yard, or yeah. Or the corner of the yard there, to the next door, the driveway's right there, and then there's a house here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A vacant yeah. lot. That's where we took a walk through the other day. And if you'd gone into the vacant lot, you could see the water from there. Even at his height, I got down on my knees and all that stuff to see, you know, especially you start working there, and there's nothing to stop him from going there. And curiosity at that age, we all know it's there, right? He's not afraid of anything. So, exactly. They don't have that built into them yet, that filler factor. So, that was some of the scenarios that we looked because we walked back and forth playing scenarios back and forth to two grown men and we were doing that. But that's what we were doing, trying to figure out, you know, what would, what would that little fellow do? And that's what we were doing and that stuff. And that's what we looked. We, we, there's a game trail, actually. You go out to the thing, go up the driveway, there's a game trail right straight out that goes out to the, to the brook. We, we just yeah. looked at that, um, and for him, that, that game trail would have been easily walked for us because of our heights and that stuff, we could, right? But from where, the, where his boot was found in the pool, we found some obstructions a little bit higher up in the, in, across the brook that we didn't think that he'd be able to, to bypass or get caught up. That's big, right? So that's why we leaned on him coming down a little bit lower and going into the water edge there. But and that, and that area, all, all, all the part of the world was searched. Yeah, exactly. Well, and we yeah. searched that. We searched that right on, on Wednesday and everything else. We had divers do it up past Sony's death as well. We, we very quickly identified the pool where the boots were found on Wednesday. It didn't take us long at all. The first search crew would come through in any place we can't see into. We flagged, we went back over, talked to Rob. Rob got firefighters with us, we went back over, we looked at those spots that we couldn't see into. And it was just, just that quick. So I guess now on the missing person side, as I said earlier, that file was open. It was open right from the first call we got. It was a missing persons case, right? So whether it was a lost child or not, still deemed a missing persons case. So there's things we need to do on that side to cover all certain things, and we did that early on. Um, as a result of that, Corporal Emery is going to be the lead investigator on the missing persons file. This, this search, uh, for all intents and purposes, isn't over. Um, but the active search portion is. I mean, they've done all they can do as far as cover air, land, or water right at this point in time. They've got the mannequin thing they want to do later on this week, right? Um, which, which would be great if it, if it gave us some new leads or information. Uh, information that comes into us, we follow up with, and if it's something like a sighting of something in the day or a sighting of something, we would engage these folks right away again, right? So just because the active search is kind of winding down, uh, that they're not going to be on site every day doesn't mean they can't be up and running within 20 minutes of a call, right? So uh, we'll, we'll follow up every lead, every piece of information that's called into us or sent 
presented to us or messaged us or whatever medium is documented and if there's a task assigned to it, somebody follows it up. So stuff doesn't come in and just says, oh yeah, whatever, and we dismiss it. Everything that comes in gets a tasking and somebody will follow it up, right? Um, that's kind of where we're at. So Monty's job is the lead investigator is to coordinate all of that. So he'll now have our file. It's his responsibility. He may want to bring some people in again to talk to. He may want to re-interview folks. So there may be a whole bunch of things that he wants to do. So be patient with that. But know that it's, we're all trying to get to the same goal here. right? So uh, we all need to work together. And uh, I guess today we just wanted to help let you guys understand where we are at. Give you an opportunity to ask questions from the people that were on the ground doing the actual searching. So you could feel somewhat confident that they did a thorough job. And I know they did. I, I, I wanted you folks to see. We showed you the other day in the command post. But uh, that was then. Now this is a full picture of what they did, right? And a couple of things that they, they still want to try. But on the, on the missing persons thing, Monty will be your point of contact. You can still call me if you want, but it would be preferable to deal with one person on that stuff. So I don't get stuff to Aaron or Ron doesn't get stuff. It's just easier that Monty can manage the tasks in the file, right? So I'm not by any means blowing you guys off. I'm just saying for efficiencies and for thoroughness, it's best that Monty is the point of contact for things, right? You um, did get my voicemail. I did get yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I, was, I left it probably quarter after four, and I think he called at four for four or so. Um, but on that note, that, that lady on Arthur Street that he called about, one of the, we, again, we opened a file on it, the officer went down, one of the constables went down, Trevor Lamont, talked to her, told her, and whatever, so that should be that. We did try to get on this uh, justice page at the head. It, we can't use our own personal Facebook because if there's evidence or something that comes off that, then we can't for court purposes. So they, this, our Facebook page has that on it, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't accept us, right? So we tried to try to join the group or whatever, and they wouldn't let us. That one's down um, now. That's down now. Yeah, but they yeah, started voices, another one, right? Voices, voices now. Voices yeah. now. Yeah. trying to shut that right. down. Right, so from what we understand, these two guys are from British Columbia that have started this. And, uh, right. Yeah, nine chances out of ten, it's one person. And okay, nine chances out of ten, and with, with, with 12 different start profiles. Or something, right? To yes. take profit off of the tragedy, right? So that's the kind of stuff we got to try to manage, too. Mm -hmm. But like I told Ashley the other day, social media is going to be, it, it's, it's a distraction. It's a lot of noise. Um, we get emails daily from people from all over the country about, what about this, check that, and all, trying to be helpful. But again, like, if you follow that stuff, it's going to be really hard. And it's, right. we, we've completely cut off awesome. social media. Yeah. Because but it's people that can't call you or tell you, like, but you know, you know, one of our main concerns right now is there's that uh, Brittany Page. Yeah. And she physically went to my mom's house. Okay. Um, and was knocking yeah, on, on the first door. She didn't get yeah, to my mom's door. door. Yeah. She got to the first door. Yeah, but did she actually get there? Or she's just saying on Facebook that she Apparently did. Apparently she was talking to Shirley. And Shirley okay. said she had to go inside because she had pneumonia. Okay. So if, if that happens, yeah. just call her dispatch line. Put in a complaint that motive for anything else. And we're excited about that. You know, we've, we've heard this Jada Brooke, um, you know, she was doing a live stream video yesterday, um, you know, so those are just... This, this she called me at 12 like o'clock like at night the first are, time and then I turned her away yep. and you know, there then was, it all started. There was also a post um, telling people to Google yep. my, my mom's street and... Yep. You know, to see how this all happened. So, you know, people I'm afraid that these addresses are going to be, you know, people are going to start coming. Yeah. And then, then Dorothy needs to call or whatever, right? Wait, we'll, we'll be there for seconds, right? So, people are disrespectful, people are really ignorant, and people, people, some people, not everybody, some people thrive off tragedy, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they get, they, they, they kind of invent themselves or inject themselves and other people to police that, but someone like that lady on our street that was disrespectful, we went and told her that. So if we can do that, that's that's awesome. But in the case of this justice for Dylan Page, it was the two guys are PC, right? So yeah, and yeah. now it is, right? Yeah. This but, medium is from New York. Yeah. Did you get a look at her? No. No, I, geez, no, I did. I, I yeah, didn't. Like, I can't. I'm telling you. We've had, we had mediums from all over the country. Yeah, the you know, one know. person says she can breathe underwater. She'd like well, to come. Right? Right? Like it's like, but she, she you know. did try and contact us. This was at midnight, and yeah. you know we just we couldn't deal with any more. No, she she's close. And she was she, she was, she was trying to be night. helpful. Yeah. You know, and then it just turned from helpful to. 
everything else. Right. I'm sure yeah. everybody has seen yeah. the things that are being said. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of them are great detectives. I just well, they got all the they, answers. They, 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 they should put this on the resume, yeah, and any all, law enforcement police in the world will be glad to have that. Yeah, they got all the answers. Oh, that's exactly the same. Exactly. Thing. Like, uh, there's no reason. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's, that's why I told Ashley, said so you shut that off. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's it's hard to do all because all my girlfriends and stuff reaching out to you and saying, "Hey, listen, what you're saying about this or that." You know what I told you? We shut that down too. Tell him to do that. Excuse yeah. my language. No, I told him fuck off. Exactly. Yeah. I I had a TikTok account that I had to delete it yeah. because people are just tearing my pages apart. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to because they're malicious assholes out there. Right, right. You well, know, it's, yeah. it's just starting to be more of like safety concerns yeah. and well, it's safety stuff, concerns. Right? And it's taking away from Dylan. Right. Yeah. And safety concerns. That's our charity responsibility. So you don't feel safe or someone shows up at your place or north. Northeast place or Norman's place or wherever, then you need to call us. Love it. So you live in the Airship Pier? Yeah. Yeah, so call the Airship Pier yeah. if you're if, at your mom's house there. By all means, call us. Okay. Yeah. And don't, don't ask for money ever. You just, just say, say you're right, Sarah. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, they'll ask you questions, the same questions they did with that kind of stuff. Why do you need the police there? They create a file and an officer will be there. It's unfortunate because sometimes social media can be wonderful without the prayers and yeah, blessing support and love and blessings that have been coming to you guys. Yeah. It only takes two bad apples sure. to change your mind. Your mind's a whirlwind. Sure. It's just like this going in your gray. I know. Yeah. But you have hundreds and thousands of people who just are praying and hoping and, you know, warm wishes and loving wishes to you guys. Yep. It's taking those two, excuse me again, I swear, cocksuckers. Yep. Yep. I had a little, and they're little... I had a little old lady over and picked up. She made food cookies. And she went out and sold them to people for donations. And she's coming to my house today to bring the money because she doesn't do social media. Mm-hmm. And she only raised like $35. She's still, right? That's, that's, that's the honor. There's so right. many people out yeah. there. Yes. And I got people, you know, saying stuff, well, where's all this GoFundMe money gone? Well, why are you supposed to their yeah. goddamn business? I know, that's not even what the fucking money. I'm only kidding. And if any one of these people Take it all. that that are have have fun long to say about this. They show me where they made their donation if they're so worried about your dollar. You prove to me you gave it. Yeah. Come back, I'll give it back to you tenfold. Yeah. I think like I well, said, it's taken away from you guys in the process yes. of screaming and I'm going to ask what happens because it's all about the noise and the distraction, right? And it's upsetting. It really is. Oh, yeah. I mean, we see we are like, really nice, right? You guys feel right. Uh, yeah, I told them to just stay off it. Just yeah, it's off. easy to say. Yes. But yeah. you're right. Oh, the, yeah. the more you can stay away from it, clear it. Just if you got questions, come to us straight from the source of the information. And if you have concerns, let us know, right? Yeah, that's really all we can do to try to manage that piece. You know? Yeah, we, we did that. Anyway, yeah, we, we, we told all our friends, screenshot and send to the police. We're yeah, done. Yeah, we yeah, don't don't want, want to see it. Oh, you guys don't want to see it. I have another question. Yeah. Um, like when I went over to the field and seen you yeah. on Saturday, you came yeah. over for an update. Yeah. Um, you showed Ashley the picture. I never seen the picture of the boots or anything. Um, then you said that they were found three in the morning. No. No, we found at, we found one boot that was seven minutes to eight, and we found the other one. Yes, but I found that out later. But yeah. when you were you came up to the apartment, yeah, and you showed Ashley the boots, yeah, and you said it was three in the morning. Ten people heard it. Okay, but yeah, yeah, well, yeah, no, I like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, where the confusion comes from. I didn't, that's go, that's why I didn't like, ask people, did he say three in the morning? Yeah, I, but that's, I, not, I, that's not what I, I don't remember saying. Yeah, that's yeah not, like I say, it could be a mistake. Yeah, I doubt it. Would. Right, but like, yeah. purposely, he didn't say, did he say three in the morning? I just said, what time did he say? Yeah. I asked, did, there were probably ten people there. No, no, we found them in the evening, during that evening. I did one of the first tasks of that. And your guys' hands are flying too.
such an organized chaos. Yes, yeah, this is when you, it's like it, it's when you get, get out and you want all your resources in right away, right? We've never witnessed anything like that. Yeah, that's, right. Right. that's the best word I've come up with, organized chaos. That's what we call the hasty teams. Yeah. Get in quick and get what you need to do with. We, we had people out searching before even the main trip. Okay. They were going out with their cell phones and a piece of notepad paper that I wrote what I wanted them to do with. So on um, what percentage do you think this might have been an abduction? That that's not our interpretation. Yeah, okay. okay. we, we just search. We search. Yeah. We support them. We search a lot of we're an evidence-based organization. Yes. And there's no evidence right now that, that leads us to that. So it's very we have to go. We have to go on what we have, which are the boots in the water, right? That doesn't mean we're not doing our police missing person file, and I can't get into everything that we're doing, but as it stands right now, there's no indication that this child is abducted. And as he says, we're a clue-based organization. We follow the clues. They're all scientists. I mean, that's, that's exactly what we do. We go out, we locate the clues, and we tell them, and we determine what they mean to us. If the main clues that we found here are the boots, where they were found, that's what's driving our program where it is. Yeah. Not that we, we disassociated, I don't know if you've noticed on Sunday, we had a lot of ground search and rescue over by the house and that stuff. That's because we're going out to see if there's any clues we missed. And that's why it hurts to do an area again. Yeah, and we'll usually do each area at least three times. Well, each area around that house was done three times the first night. And then it was done again the next day. Then the broke was done Saturday and Sunday again. Yeah. And then the properties were done on Sunday. So, and the broke was done again yesterday. Yes. It's almost like vanished. So that's what it is. And that's some of the questions that we hope to that's ask as we well. Mm -hmm. we, we, we hope to answer some of those questions. Is it, you know, and that's why we decided we'd try this mannequin thing outside the box is because there's lots of questions here that right. deserve an answer. We also yeah. we deserve an answer, and it is a method to trying to get that, and we come up with this idea. So we're going to run it and see what happens, and it may answer, it may give us some answers, it may even cause us more questions. We don't know that, but it's oh, worth trying. Try. Yeah, and everything all together in future events, it's going to help for Absolutely. somebody else in the next phase yeah, and year. Actually, every organization we've talked about running this trial with wants our data afterwards. Oh, no, no. He, he oh, went no. down to the main warden service, as we've been talking to them, because they've got an extensive dive team down there. Like, we've been... Uh, it's time to wake up. This is all I know stuff. This is what they need to find it. Okay. Yes, so everybody's... Stuff. Jesus. Everybody's been going out of their way to do everything they can. Oh, no doubt. I, I, I believe that. I believe on that. On the weekend and that stuff, when our teams were out, we had to get them to stop. I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. You guys got a whole community behind you. Right? Despite some of the people that are saying trash on Facebook or whatever, mm -hmm. the majority yeah. of people are yeah. right across the country. Oh, yeah, that's what I tried to explain to her for every, right. every 1,500 yeah. people that are on there bashing right. on these little sites. Yeah. Yeah. She has 100,000 people yeah, we're hearts. We're from people all across the country, right? Yes. Their hearts are breaking free. Yeah. So and no, no lie. I mean, it's, it's, you can just separate the noise from the, the truth. Like, I'm trying to get everything all forwarded to me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know nothing about social media, I know nothing about computers and cell phones, and my poor old phone and friend list is just, I don't accept anybody's friend. If they're my friend, you would have known them, right? I would have known them. So if somebody literally comes and say, okay, I want to be your friend, like anybody in my life, I have like 70 people, I think the last time I checked, but they're truly my friends, people yeah. I'm going to talk to, like in the next two months. Sure. I don't want to see you in person, but I want you on social media. Yeah, like I've done it. I've done it. And there is some media too. Like they're, yes. they're still probably bugging you guys too, because they're, they're calling yeah, us. Yeah, I actually. For updates, right? As soon as she sent me, sent me things, yeah. and when I talked to her first night, she called, well, actually they called and contacted my sister in uh, out west, CBC. Yeah, you were saying that you got there. Let's talk about the investigation. So I just told her, I said, anything is directed for me, you know, Ashley and Jason don't need this heartache right now. Right. So they called me and Suzette called me and I was sitting in my car with my girlfriend and a niece and I was on speakerphone and she just asked how we're doing, oh, this is terrible, I'm helpless and, you know, right at this time she wanted to do an interview 
you said, not right, not right this time. We will do an interview because this might help somebody else along the way. And then, but I will get back to you. And then that night about 8 o'clock, my sister in Bridgewater called and said she heard my voice on, her, on the TV. So what? So Suzette was recording the conversation we were having. And, and then put bits and pieces on there. The grandfather, and my voice, I went and found it on social media or whatever. But I was here maybe Sunday. Come in to talk to um, Derek. Yeah, for the time you, yeah, today right. you did today you did your interview. Yeah, and you right. said it was probably your last one. Yeah. She was here and I and I brought that up to her. And I said you really broke my trust and she told me that she told me that it was being recorded. Yeah. But, she, but she, I said, Suzette, you did not. And if you if you say and you do, you show me on your recording where you told me you said this. Yeah. And then I yeah, and I said, I understand your this is your job to dig, dig, dig. But like, you know, some cases dig, dig, dig is good. But where I told you I will give you an interview, but not great at this moment. I said you shouldn't have talked that away from me or anyone else. Absolutely. So, yeah, that I right. Steve she kind of bound her. No, I just remember being in that, that yeah. station so, and they said stage three is not recovery. And then I found that out on the news. Of all you guys? That hurt too. Yeah, they're going to say something. No, I mean, that was in the command center. Well, we were yeah. in the command yeah. center, yeah. the four of us. Yeah. I remember we were talking about everything that we've, everything that you've done, everything that you're going to do, yeah. and that we were moving into stage three. Yeah. But we weren't in recovery. Yeah. You, I remember you specifically said we weren't there yeah, yet. That figure, the, the and captain then or later the, on the news, head, yeah. it said stage three recovery mode. Yeah. So, you know, we're kind of feeling like, you know, we're not being told the truth or we're being left out of the loop. Yeah. You know what? Sometimes we hear more from the news than yeah. than what's going on. And um, there wasn't yesterday, it was the day before, the news heading said uh, the search continues for the body of the three-year-old boy. You so, know? so, like I tell you, they're not getting that from us. So they're not getting it from us. Our guys yeah. have a lot of You've seen them for three days. They're but not, I think where that like misconception river, right? is coming from was saying that we weren't in stage, mm -hmm. we weren't in recovery. Yeah. But then there it was all over the news. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. He knew what stage three was, but he didn't tell us what stage three was. No, but was the ground search guy. Yeah, the head guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the ground search guy. Yeah. You were there. Uh, yeah, he yeah, was there. there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I remember you guys specifically saying that we weren't there yet. Yeah. You well, said that, but then here searching. we are. So we were not just still searching for days after that, right? So, no, 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 no. So, so we weren't there yet, right? So we were there. Now, that's later. why we wanted to have you here today to explain where we are today. No, so, I guess it doesn't matter. It's just it was three, four hours later after speaking yeah. with you down at the Stanfield's ball field, and yeah. it's like, you know, this is something we're eventually going to have to look into, but we're not going right. to pinpoint a day now. And then four right. hours later. We see you yeah. videotape with yeah. your conference saying that we're yeah. in recovery mode. Yeah. And it's like, whoa. So what the hell yeah. happened in three or four hours? Yeah. So the thing for us is the grand posts were leaving down there, right? So between them, yeah. Right. So that's kind of it. I guess it's it's search search and rescue talk. Uh, like words, like the words. So search and like, recovery. Oh, we're still searching, but we're not actively yeah. open. To, you know, technology. Right. Yeah. 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 How that got construed. I can see how they yeah. misunderstanding. It just made her just, drop. Yeah. It, yeah, it did. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's, search, it's search or searching. Like, it's around search and rescue language is what it is, right? So realistically, uh, two or three days after we've been searching, there's a, probably a good chance we are looking for to recover bills, right? Not, not like not saying to crush you guys and say, yeah, there's no hope we're ever going to find a lie. We just want to say that, right? So it's it's ground search rescue language for the next phase of what they're doing, but we still are looking for them, right? We didn't know that at the time, and it yeah. really yeah. was yeah. helpful. Yeah. We did. Yeah, I guess we know our terminology type of things because in here we also have survival statistics. Okay. Okay. Um, how far later you expect to find the person alive and that stuff? Those are statistics that we use. With everything considered, like with everything considered, he had a shit weather. You got it. He had nothing, he had nothing, he had nothing going for him at all. It, well, and for us, it's, we do that because it helps us keep our resources because they're yes. doing dangerous work out there. And if there's no chance...
statistics to find that child alive or, or that person alive, then we put in more more safety stuff for our guys to to end that. <laughs> Is that kind of where we're at? Um, you open up can worms. I opened up can worms. Shit. Um, it's hard, no, but we're, we're, we're searching. Down. We're searching. We're we're searching. We we brought Halifax Ground Search and Rescue in, in these weeks with every resource we had on Wednesday night. We brought in Halifax what Thursday morning? Thursday morning. Thursday morning. They took it for the first member came on site about four thirty in the morning yeah. to start talking about what was going on. Their command was there by 5.30 and set up, and they started asking the members shortly thereafter. So, it's just... Yeah, they managed to manage the search for that day. That's when the briefings were. They handed back over. Um, they uh, decided at that time, that, that that's where that came out of, that, that phase three portion of it came out of. Next day, Rob contacted us. We went up, we did flying around and all that stuff. Rob says to us, do you, we think we've done everything or what else can we do? We said, well, we want to get back search. Mm -hmm. so, so the search kept going all weekend, right? Yeah. So, so I guess we know. to answer your question, I mean, why we wanted to have you down here today is to get that full, full so right you know. from ground search and rescue's mouth to see what they did. And, and that we pretty much exhausted everything that we could visibly do yeah. to search. Right? Well, what we did, uh, we, we had the guys back on the ground Friday evening again. But what we concentrated on doing was getting the water at the lowest tide. We got two hours, two hours that we wanted to get our guys on those tidal flats, and we covered from the 102 all the way here. Both sides of the river, we had three man teams for two hours. Three or four. We had a guy get stuck in the mud that we had to gank him out and then we had to go back in and fish his radio out. We actually had that Wednesday night, we had teams on those dikes and over those dikes when that tide came. They didn't realize they were in danger until their feet were getting wet. That's how determined these people are to be out there. We know that. So uh, I go forward. You're not going to see the teams that you saw since Wednesday out into town or on the dikes unless they need, unless we need them. We find yes. so we're going to do, We are going to do this mannequin test. So. so we will be there for that. We have you know, a couple of kayakers chasing and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, the reality is we've exhausted our search area. That's, that's reality. Yeah, and we're focusing now solely on the missing persons investigation. It's over yeah. and it's ongoing. And if we get next to the sightings, then we'll engage these folks to, to, to continue to follow those up, right? So I guess, so, so to be clear on, on, like, so there's no confusion. Like, after you guys said you want to hear the, the straight truth, this is the truth. This is where we're at today. This is why we wanted to have you here today to have that conversation with you guys, to let you know the expectation that these folks are ramping up or, or kind of, you know, pulling back their actual search because they've done everything that we can possibly do aside from the mannequin, which they're going to try. And then uh, we're going to concentrate solely on the missing persons file, which is open and active and, and ongoing. So if we clues come up and if sightings come up, these guys will get pretty engaged again. Can we talk about the active investigation? Yeah, well, you'll be able to answer some questions. It's early on still, but we can, we got to be careful what we have to answer to on the investigation if you can. Exactly. Yes. I, I, so were I, I, all the really people on any... that vlog questioned? Uh, before, before we get into that part of it. Were they all questioned? I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Before, before we get into the missing person part of it, is there anything else on the search side? Because I'd like to just meet with you guys. Yeah. yeah. Pray there's a clue. <laughs> well, if there's a clue, I know you guys will. No, 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 no. I really know that. The, the other piece before these guys go too is now the media is calling us every hour, want to know where we at today. So, so we are going to let them know that the active physical ground search and air search, and water search has exhausted, and we haven't been successful in locating the element. However, we're moving into the, this piece, so you'll hear that in the media. So, so you guys prepared for that. We wanted to have you here today to tell you that up front, and uh, just so you know, you don't see it on TV or hear it. That's we're going to send that out today to let them know, and then hopefully they'll stop bothering you folks and stop bothering us and understand that we're working on this, and when we have something to report. We'll let them know, but they can't keep calling you guys or turning around over here all the time and expect us to keep them updates. 
every hour on how things are going because that's not that's taking the guys to the work they need to do and it's causing a grief for you guys and there's miscommunication and there's you know they're, they're putting their skin on it they don't never want to say we're looking for no body or no one so if a reporter took that and decided that's my angle to, to take my story more important than everyone else's story that's that's what they do that's their job they sensationalize tragedies right and that's what they're all about not saying they're evil i'm not saying we were supposed to dislike them but they are do. they allowed to do yeah that? they can they can put their spin on it's, for the it's, it's completely legal what they're doing put their spin on it's like your bag of garbage in your house once you set it up because it's off it's, your it's, step it's, it's words okay. right it's 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 words sniffing, right so it's much like recovery versus phase through versus looking for the body it's words sniffing. so they're taking that and they're extrapolating what they want to say and make it so and they put it out there so I mean, as for search and rescue, I, I don't have any other ideas. You know, but if you get the we're kind of out. Right? We won't yeah. have anything we think of. We're bringing it up. Yeah. But I mean, I don't. I don't have any other thoughts as to what could have happened. I, we, we, we need to reach out to other people, other teams, other organizations that asked, you know, that, is there something we've missed? Yeah. And we've gotten the same answer back. Every, everybody has said, these, oh, I'm sure you went to the end of the world and back for a little while. Yeah. Extremely true. So on, on the police side, as the I see most of the time with the teams here, multiple times during the day, I'd say, what are we missing? Here? What else can we do? Right? And their advice is sound. They've done all they can. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Do <laughs> so you want to excuse these guys? Yes, yeah, sure. I asked one of the The pants that Dylan was wearing, they were camouflage or camouflage they, pants. Camouflage jogging were, pants. Were the, they were jogging pants, which is not pajama. They were, they were jogging pants. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. They had the, um, the small cuff around the ankle and around. Elastic cuff. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. You just wonder about material for weight, yeah, and just water yeah. absorption and stuff like that. So we, we want to be as realistic yeah. as possible. Yeah, and so under, under his winter jacket, he just had a T-shirt on. Uh, uh, red T-shirt. Just a red T-shirt. Just a red T-shirt. Yeah. Okay. So you guys, you guys are kind of getting around what the media is going to say this afternoon, probably, right? Yeah. If they call you, they don't, don't, don't talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. Or about Storm is still your point of view. Oh, yeah, still. Well, you guys decide as a family how that. We're right. done with the contacts. Let's get it. The other, the other thing I want to ask you, and you tell me. Don't want us to do this. It's, it's not ready to do search. But we've been, we've been uh, during the, the COVID 19 pandemic thing, we've been reading stories online to kids, right? And uh, we're supposed to do one tomorrow. But to understand the sensitivity of the situation, we would really we want your once in year or day to do it tomorrow. So if you think you've got something we should still do this week, or do you want us to I say not this week? I don't know. Or is there what a you're talking about so tomorrow, we, so like we, we read storybooks online. So we started just for kids during the. Like during the oh, okay. Thing. Uh, and we, we do one every Wednesday morning, right? We put it on our Facebook page and people are supposed to watch. But because of this tragedy with Dylan, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if this is good we can do it or not. Because you guys may say, well, Jesus, now they're reading stories to kids, and, right? So we can do one or two things, not do it this week, or dedicate the story to Dylan if there's a favorite book that he liked or whatever. We can read that. But I want to ask you guys at first. I got a We can give you a book if you want. It's up to you guys. Or oh, yeah, just carry on with this for other kids. I, I have a suggestion. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the book. But um, I can find out the name of the book. Um, it's especially for kids. Yeah. Um, Dragonflies okay. have two different color eyes. That's the name of the book? No, but they do, they do have two different yeah, color yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah, have two yeah, different yeah. color eyes. Yeah. Dragonflies are yeah. born in the water. Yeah. Dragonflies live by the water. It's more rare than that. It was just and one dragonflies, one. when they die, yeah. they go back to the water. Hazel and blue. Right, yeah, that's, down that's the one way. It's a book that they use to explain to kids about death. Okay. Yeah. Right? Okay. And um, I'm not sure I can find what they find. Well, yeah, that's not. But if that's something you would actually and Jason you think is okay, then we will. If not, we won't do it this week. Or I won't even mention it. So it's up to you guys. Oh, no, that'd be good. There's uh, plenty of other little kids. Well, that's not there, fashion, and right? That's what Jason did decide. I mean, are you sure? And we won't we won't even mention them if you don't want. Or if you do, we will. Well, because some kids to you guys. Yeah, some kids might have questions and ask, right? If they're but we don't we don't wanna we don't wanna make it the focus, but I don't wanna do something that offends you guys, that's all I'm saying. Right? It's about Dylan and I'm fine with it. Why don't you think about it? Let us know. Right? You don't have to give the answer. Do you guys talk about it private? But we've been doing this, and, and we're doing to do one tomorrow. And I just thought I said to Tara down.
downstairs is for organizing of our site. Hello, I want to have speaks and ask the first night. I was thinking about everything that happened last week. Do we want to go on Facebook and read stories? We can't tell you that, right? And is that you guys going to find that insensitive or offended? And I want to make sure that we're, we're considering your feelings, right? So let us know before we do it, right? And, if, and I have a problem not doing it this week. I completely understand. If you say, you know what, I'd rather use not, then that's fine. Or if you think, you know what, thank, thank you, guys, we'll do that. So let us know. So Rob and Monty will talk to you about the criminal investigation piece and how that's going to work. A lot of information, a lot of devotion, a lot of overwhelming stuff going on. Take your time, you need processing, grief, if you need counseling, if you need stuff, we can get all that for you guys. No charge, right? So let us know, right? I know I've offered it to Norm before, I spoke to you yesterday about it, but that's there and available. People want to do it. So if you feel you need it, I know you're strong and you're being remarkable through this, but there's going to come a point in time where you're going to need to, to reach out, right? And, and we've got those supports in place for you guys if you need it, right? So, Thank okay, you. all right. You guys good then? Mm -hmm. Take care, Thank Thanks. So they're on the recording side of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 